What is going on everyone, Salty Jules back again today with another review. So for today's review, we have an RBA for the .aio. As I've said a hundred times, the .aio has truly become an entity of its own. Once you see companies like Sturdy MFG or Mission XV or, you know, what else, Atmazoo making products for a certain device, you really know that it has kind of been introduced into the upper echelon of, you know, devices. And I think that it's continuing to grow. It's definitely continuing to evolve, and this device has really made its place in the market. Thousands of devices get released every year, well, maybe not thousands, hundreds get released every year, and not too many of them stick. So hats off to DotMod for achieving that. And today we got another product for that device. We have the EVL Spot. I'm definitely excited to get into this. I love the packaging. And I'm also interested in their Reaper style of build deck, but that is all to come once we get down low. With that all being said, let's check it out. I gotta say, I have always enjoyed the packaging and the presentation that EVL has done for the products. I believe, you know, their other billet box, Boro Bridge, which is the evil alien, I'm pretty sure, has this same type of tin can. Surprisingly enough, this is a patented tin can. If we turn it on to the bottom, it says uh, presentin, which is kind of a play on words, I guess. And then we have patented right over there. So, yeah, looks like they uh, put a patent on a metal tin, which is pretty kind of funny. But Evil Spot Addy PC, I believe the PC stands for polycarbonate, which is the you know color or the type of material that is used for the tank. And then we have a little QR code. Other than that, EVL, your standard sticker that they put on all of their stuff. So, yeah, just you know some really unique, cool packaging. Once we pop off the lid to our evil spot, we are going to come to a tin full of Muji Japanese organic cotton. Other than a tin full of cotton, what we are going to get is a spares bag full of different airflow pins. We will be going over that in just a second. Some extra O-rings for our Addy. And then we also have our 510 converter. Now to top it all off, of course, we have the RBA itself. And here is your evil spot. I gotta say, this is a pretty good looking tank. It's constructed out of 316 stainless steel, and we also have our polycarbonate tank, and thank Jesus, we have some black O-rings. My dot shell has clear O-rings, and they just, they stain over time, and they get this like light brown look to it. It just looks gross, so I can for sure appreciate that. Now in EVL's word, this is a tank that is supposed to replace your regular dot tank, and provides a Reaper style of build deck to give you excellent flavor. Now I'm more of a traditional kind of guy, so if I have something that works and I enjoy it, I like the point threes, I like the dot shell, it's gonna take quite a lot for this to become, you know, a permanent part of my dot rotation. So I mean, we'll, we'll see about that in due time, but over the aesthetics, I'm pretty happy. So here is our 510 adapter or converter, whatever you wanna call it. This is actually pretty easy to use. Let me show you how to do that. We're gonna take our spot, Flip it upside down and you will see this little ring that is surrounding the 510. It's really easy to remove. If it is fresh out of the factory and it has a little bit of a you know, rigidness to it, I actually learned this from Tony B, you're gonna take a little tool, just stick the end into one of those openings and you know, kind of push on it until it loosens up. You really don't have to you know, re-fasten this thing too tightly, just get it on there. And then once it's loose enough, you can just really take your finger and spin it until it unthreads completely. So once we have our little ring removed, all we're going to do is place it to the side, somewhere where you're not going to lose it, and our spot is ready to be threaded onto the adapter, which is, you know, self-explanatory. And once we have that completely threaded on, this is ready to be placed on top of the device and build up. For our last little accessory bag, other than some you know spare post screws and O-rings, what we have is an interchangeable airflow pin system. Now this pin system ranges from an MTL all the way to an open DL. I mean 3.0 in my terms at least is an open DL, but this comes with five separate pins. And these pins range from 1.0, 1.5, 2.0, 2.5, and 3. We only see four right here right now because one is already installed. Today we're going to be rocking the 3.0. I'm really trying to push this RBA to its limits. So we're going to throw a nice beefy .3 Alien on the inside, or maybe .3 Clapton. And we're going to see how the airflow functions and, you know, how well it does. Let's 
let's take a look at our build deck. This is one of the most unique build decks that I have ever seen. And as I said earlier in the video, this is based off the Reaper style of build deck. After doing some more research, I realized that they created the Reaper RTA. It shows how confident they are in this design. Not only have they used it in, you know, what we have right here today, they've used it in the Evil Alien, which is your, you know, billet box bridge, and they've also made the RTA. So it just shows, you know, how much they really think that this is the way to go, and I'm really excited to see how it performs. To either side of our airflow pin in the center we have two build posts that are held in place by flathead screws so to install your coil it's going to be placed here in the center and then you're going to have one lead going off this way and the other lead going that way when it comes down to our wicking ports we have a whole mess of peak insulation on the inside but I've come to the conclusion that this post right here to your right is going to be your positive post typically when it comes to the wicking ports we have more length than we do width this seems to be all width kind of like a tuna can situation if you know what I mean but uh, I, I can see this being extremely difficult to wick or really easy so I'm excited to see how that actually ends up down here we have our airflow this is a one-sided airflow of course because this is for the dot AIO and that just travels up through here and out through this airflow pin which is you know regulated by the different sized airflow pins now when it comes to wicking the evil spot rpa this is fully 100 percent dependent on gravity fed wicking you're going to see these little notches on your build deck right down here by your wicking ports and i was really confused as to what they were but once i took a look at our cap i realized that we have four holes in every corner these are going to be your juice flow control holes that's where your liquid is going to come down and it actually matches up perfectly with these little cutouts that you'll see here on our deck. So the juice is going to flow down through our cap, out those holes, and it's going to pull up right here in these little circular cutouts, and that's going to hit our cotton, which will travel up onto our coil. So wicking is going to have to be on point for this. You're not going to you know, want to wick too loose or too tight because it's gravity dependent. You know, a too tight of a wick will lead to dry hits. I said earlier that I wanted to push this RBA to its limits, and what a better way to do that than using some Kosher Coils Micro Aliens. So we have some Nichrome 80 3x30x38 by 30 by Aliens with a 2.5mm inner diameter. Let's get to it and see what we got.
are with the EVL spot sitting inside of our red G10.AO. We got the dot sturdy kit installed on this device. I gotta say this inner plate matches up really well with this RBA. So we have a kosher coil alien sitting on the inside nichrome 80 at about 2.5 millimeter inner diameter and uh, it's open out to about 0.34 so we should be getting around 30 watts. Let's take it for a spin. First thing that I want to address is the airflow on our spot. This is one singular hole. It's very wide open and this thing is like a punch to the face. In terms of dot RBAs, this has to be the most open direct lung sort of vape that I have gotten. Compared to the dot shell, which has, you know, more of a honeycomb style of airflow, this is just, it's, you know, it's really going to hit you. Now, it's not more smooth than the dot shell, but it definitely is more open, especially with that three millimeter airflow pin. It's, it's nice. I do like it. It's more reminiscent of a billet box style of bridge. If you are looking for something that is more of a wide open, if you're trying to cloud chase on this dot AAO, the evil spot is for sure the way to go. Now, typically when it comes to more airflow, you get less flavor, at least in my experience, the more, you know, air that you have circulating around that chamber, the more that it's going to kind of dilute that flavor. Well, that isn't the case for the evil spot. If I was to match it up, and if you can't tell by now, I use the dot shell kind of as my bar. That's where I set, set the standard for these dot RBAs. It's pretty on par, and I'm honestly impressed with that. I was figuring that I was going to lose some of that flavor with all this extra airflow that I had, but yeah, I mean, it's the flavor is pretty good. Let's address the build deck next. The EVL Spots build deck is really a new experience for me. Considering I haven't used any of their products, the Reaper style of build deck was an interesting build. It wasn't difficult, but the long protruding post out of the deck was really reminiscent of a, you know, a 2016 style of atomizer. It wasn't hard. It had enough, you know, room to fit my coil comfortably in terms of the ports for the actual coil leads and the deck itself you know, maintaining positioning that that coil wasn't difficult either. And the wicking was surprisingly easy. It's kind of like you got to give it the Dwight Schrute from the office. You have to part it out in the center, kind of go each way. And then you just, you know, fit it down in those holes. Make sure that you get your cotton in those little circular cutouts because that is where your liquid is going to pull up. I would also suggest that you comb out your cotton a little bit to give it, you know, a loose kind of wick you don't want it to be too loose because then the wick will collapse but just wick it out so you're not you know over stuffing that deck in terms of coil placement I lined up my coil to be you know kind of even with those two posts I didn't raise it up I just kept it you know kind of level and the flavor is great like I said the airflow is good so it was a you know a pretty decent build deck all right now it's time to talk about some cons the first thing that I wanted to bring up is this little rubber stopper that you're gonna see right here that's where you fill up your spot this thing for the life of me will not stay in place it will not stay plugged it just pops open on me and for me personally it's the little things like that that mean a lot if i'm going to be inconvenienced and my stopper is just going to pop open and dump juice all over my device it's going to urge me to go back to my more trusted rbas now i have to be clear with you guys i did get this used so that may not be the case for everybody but in my experience you know a more dependable you know juice stopper would have been cool to have secondly easily interchangeable airflow pin system once i used the bridge version 1.2 i mean i thought that was it i was like this has got to be the way that people start doing their rbas or the bridges or whatever and this really applies to any aio bridge or dot aio bridge it would have been so cool to not have to disassemble my tank take out the wick take out the build and you know change it that way so hopefully in the future we will see more of that but in terms of cons that's pretty much all i have all in all this is just a very well-rounded rba i would definitely recommend it to a new user looking for their first rebuildable for this device and i would also recommend it for you know a more experienced user searching for a true dl on the dot aio I like the Reaper style of build deck. I'll probably be looking into the evil alien after this. And it, I mean, it wasn't bad. Placing that coil and position it wasn't hard at all. And even wicking it wasn't bad. It, it's just a new, different experience. And I did have a good time with it. 
Flavor's good. Airflow is really good, especially with that three millimeter airflow pin. I haven't experienced a hit like this on the .io yet, so I'm really happy with that. And it just gives a really satisfactory vape. I mean, this isn't going to be the greatest RBA that you've ever had, but like I said, I would definitely not recommend against it. I also like the aesthetics. It matches up very nicely with my Dot Sturdy kit, and that is always a big deal for me. So yeah, all in all, had a great time with this. Thank you guys for watching my video. I have some really cool interviews and product reviews coming up, so make sure that you stick around for that. Please subscribe if you're new and leave me a comment. I appreciate all of you guys, and I will catch you on the next one.